Hey guys, what's going on? I'm back for another Netflix review and today I'm gonna to be talking about Home Team. Home Team is an American sports comedy based on a true story centering around New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton, whose team won in the Super Bowl only for him to be suspended a few years later due to his involvement in the Bounty Gate scandal. While waiting for his appeal to be processed, he returns to his hometown of Argyle, Texas for some r, &R. He reconnects with his family, including his teenage son, who participates in the local youth football team, the Argyle Warriors. After being disappointed by the team's lack of prowess, Sean accepts a coaching position with the team and works to turn their losing streak into a winning streak into time for an upcoming tournament. I actually enjoyed this movie more than I thought I was going to, especially considering that this is a Happy Madison production, which is infamous for their poor quality comedies, though I wouldn't say it's all that remarkable either. Kevin James is definitely the glue that holds this movie together. I've always been a fan of his sense of humor and dry line delivery, and anyone who appreciates his work will know pretty much exactly what to expect from him here. It isn't anything original, but his performance gets the job done. I was pleased to see a more dramatic side to his character as well, as he has to juggle the stresses of both being suspended from the NFL and trying to rebuild the damaged relationship between him and his son. Both hardships are conveyed effectively, which made me want to root for him to succeed with his team. His relationship with all of the kids in the team was probably my favorite part of the movie. All of them have different personalities, and he treats all of them differently depending on their personalities, from explaining offense and defense plays to helping them out with personal situations, and he remains firm but respectful toward them. One can get a sense, in spite of his actions with the NFL, that he cares about his team and wants the best for them. The interactions with his players reflect this as they quickly warm up to him while allowing for some genuine conflict to foster in the team through Sean's son Connor, which feels believable in its approach. As I mentioned, all of the kids on the team have different personalities, so while their names aren't always easy to remember, they usually have a running theme that makes them easily identifiable, which in turn increases the variety of interactions and comedic situations they all have. This is where much of the movie's comedy comes into play. In one example, there's a scene where Sean explains tactics to the team, and they don't understand anything written in his playbooks, so he translates his methods using food and condiments outside of a food truck, and seeing everyone's light bulbs go off in that moment where he explains was hilarious. Some of these moments don't quite land as well as they should though. There's a subplot involving a kid named Harlan who has a crush on a girl who attends the team's games, and it doesn't do much except set up his character's interest in singing, which leaves the romance feeling half-baked afterward. There are adult characters as well to mix things up along with the football team. Anyone who's familiar with past Happy Madison productions will see a lot of familiar faces in this one, most of whom perform the same cliché caricature as per usual, though there were some that surprised me. Eric the hotel desk clerk was my favorite in this regard. He is a total spy Space Cadet with how he operates on the job, and there's a great running gag involving him and Sean's noise complaints with the hotel he stays at. He still has some cringeworthy dialogue here and there, but most of the time I had a ball when he was on screen. I also thought Isaiah Mustafa's role as the coach of the rival football team was fantastic, albeit heavily underused. He has an endless arsenal of golden lines and quips that he throws towards Sean's team. It's a ton of fun to see him get under Sean's skin, and I wish the movie took more advantage of his character. Other times, though, the adult characters fall completely flat, specifically with Rob Schneider's role as the hippie Jamie, who is the partner of Sean's ex-wife. Everything about his character was more obnoxious to me than funny, as he contributes to some of the movie's grossest humor. There's one particular scene where he's involved in that I'm not going to spoil, but it made me feel nauseous the longer I was forced to watch it. Slapstick humor is fine in parts, but his character takes it to an extreme, and even when he doesn't, his moments elicit more groaning than laughter. There's some instances of sexual-based humor as well that I thought were weird in their approach, like when Sean is invited to have dinner at a player's house and his mom keeps making sexual suggestions to him in front of her son, or when the team's bus driver assures one of the coaches in front of the whole team that he's setting him up with his twin sister. The movie is rated PG, so it makes sense to have some mature instances of humor, but I found them to be more immature than anything else. They're even more strange due to how Netflix is seemingly marketing this as kid-friendly based on the tag words on its website anyway. Despite these kinds of scenes being present, its technical presentation does make it more tolerable though. The soundtrack composed by Rupert Gregson Williams adds a triumphant flair to the story as the Argyle Warriors find their stride and start to turn things around, and there's some creative cinematography during the football games too. There's also an uplifting tone that's consistently applied in almost every scene. Even though the team does lose a lot at first and they don't always perform the best, they never let anything keep them down for long and find a reason to celebrate even when losing games, which endeared me more to all the characters involved. At the same time though, I couldn't help but feel it was an ordinary experience like this type of redemption story had been done before. I think some of that was due to characters like Taylor Lautner's Troy Lambert, who doesn't really do much other than give generic advice to the players. Everyone fulfills their roles in the way one would expect, which makes us 
story a tad too predictable, on top of the iffy humor weighing things down more. Though to be fair, it's a lot more bearable to watch than other movies made by Happy Madison in the past. Overall, Home Team is an average sports comedy that won't blow anyone's mind, but it's enjoyable enough to watch thanks to Kevin James's performance and the chemistry of the cast involved with his team. If you like sports comedies and are wary of Happy Madison's catalog in general, you might find yourself pleasantly surprised with this one, though I do recommend that you brace yourself in advance for the more off-putting scenes. It's basic in its approach to telling Sean Payton's story, but sometimes a basic feel-good story is all you need without having to worry about putting too much thought into it. For anyone looking for that sort of movie, you could definitely do worse than this. What did you think about this movie? Did you have fun experiencing a lighthearted version of Sean's story, or did the comedy turn you off completely from watching further? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Home Team. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Dutch drama My Best Friend and Frank. Bye bye!